Hi, everyone, and welcome to Book Break. Here we are in August. It's the last couple of weeks of summer, and I have a special guest today, Sherry. You might see Sherry at our circulation desk. She's also busy in the back. She does a lot of processing of our books to get them ready for everyone. And like many of us, Sherry is an avid reader and is here today to talk some of the about some of the books that she's been reading lately this summer. So welcome to Sherry, and uh, tell me a little bit about what you like to read. Well, thank you, Claire, for having me. Um, I like my rom-coms, as you know. Mm -hmm. I read a lot of different things, but um, I think I go back to rom-coms because it wasn't the first thing that got me interested in reading, but it was the first thing that got me interested in rapid fire reading, where I find an author and then I have to go find everything that author has written and read them all. Well, you know what? I think a lot of people can relate to that because I sometimes if I find a book, I like to go into the backlist of that author. You know, you find something you like, you want to delve in. So Yes, yes. And um, Sophie Kinsella was the first rom-com author that got me started and then I just went from there and um, I often choose a book by the cover and then I find a new author and then I research what other books there are to read from that author if I like the first one I read. Okay well and today you're going to feature a certain author that you've been liking lately correct? I am yes um, Lynn Painter. Okay. Yes. And she is one of those authors that has both adult and teen books. Correct. Which you and I have talked about, that sometimes we like the teen books. Yes. Sometimes I want something even lighter. Right. Rom-coms are light, but sometimes I want something even fluffier, even, <laughs> even lighter. And I often read them on my lunch break. Just little, little half hours here and there that I have, and I find that those are the best for that. Now, you told me something once that kind of intrigued me. You said you have a workbook. And a home book? I do. Okay. I do. Um, if I'm going to read at work, I want the the light rom-com, um, maybe even the YA rom-com. Um, but if I'm home, then I want something that I'm really going to spend the weekend reading or I'm going to read straight through, cover okay. to cover. All right. You know, I'm not going to just read it in half hour little snippets of time. Yeah. Um, that and, and I also may not want to go back and forth from it because I'm really interested or I don't want to mix up the characters or anything like that. Okay, but you can read more than one book at a time. I can read more than one book at a time. That is a talent. Yes, but I often choose a nonfiction and a fiction in order to not mix up okay. characters and storylines. Interesting. So I'm learning something on the one hand, and I'm just reading for entertainment on the other hand. Yeah, sometimes I, I listen to nonfiction, so I feel like I'm educating. I try to do like one a month, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I do more, but, you know, rarely. Well, but. I picked up recently, I just picked up an Express. Um, it was a thriller. And I brought it home, and I read that. Yeah, I was concerned because it was an express. Am I going to get done with it? Well, that was that was a two day read because yeah. I was because it was really good, and I was really interested, and I wanted to find out what happened. Right. And for those of you that like express books, we renew our express books, so you don't have to be worried about finishing that book in a week. So, well, I'm going to start with my first book. And this one was one that was recently released at the end of July. And it's been a bit buzzy. I've been seeing a lot about it in journals and on social media. And it's called The Wedding People by Allison Esbach. So this one is interesting because it starts in beautiful, like, Newport, Rhode Island. And Phoebe Stone arrives at this very exclusive Cornwall Inn. She's wearing a green dress, gold high heels, not a bag in sight. Um, mis she's immediately mistaken at the inn for a member of, like, the wedding party or wedding guests. Because literally everyone else in this hotel is in a wedding. A very oh, okay. exclusive Newport society wedding of this young woman who was marrying a doctor. So anyway, the thing that's really strange about this is Phoebe is here. She's dreamt about coming here for years. Um, she was hoping to like eat oysters and seafood and go sailing with her husband. But her life has really taken a bad turn. Phoebe oh, had dear. struggled with infertility. Then her husband had an affair her marriage ended. So now Phoebe is here because she has decided 
to end her life. That's why she oh, has dear. no luggage. Right. Oh, no. I, I think her cat died. That was the last thing oh, that totally put her over straw. the edge. And okay. this is not a spoiler. This all happens in like the first part of the book. Well, anyway, Phoebe runs into the bride who they start having a conversation in the elevator. First, the bride is upset that someone that was not invited is in the penthouse and is not a member of her wedding party. Um, and then she finds out what she plans to do, and she's like, absolutely not. You are not going to ruin my <laughs> nope, wedding. I no. have spent a million dollars on this. <laughs> Every detail is perfect, and <laughs> you are not going to ruin it. Not that it's about me. Yeah, because, but, but it is about her. She's. But anyway, these two characters start going back and forth, and they end up, of course, having a friendship. Um, and then the characters start to interweave in a way. I don't want to give too much away about the plot lines. I will say that... If you're worried about what happens to Phoebe, Phoebe does is not successful in, in her okay, suicide attempt. And once she's not, she decides that she has reason to live. Um, I have mixed emotions about this. I, I enjoyed reading it. The suicide theme is really tough for me. Yeah. And I think if you've had someone in your family that has really struggled with that, or someone very close to you, that ease in which it disappears in a lot of these books just doesn't sit well with me yeah. i yeah. had a lot of problem with a man called ova a lot of people love that one so that for me and that's just a very personal thing because i had a lot of experience with that so that kind of sets me off but i think if you don't have that a lot of people found this book to be very funny there's a lot of very frank talk about sex and sexuality in this book and different relationships like phoebe the man she's marrying is a doctor but he was married before and he's a widower he has a daughter and just the relationship of the stepdaughter and the way the in-laws fit in and all of this expectation and what people have done like these weddings are literally week-long celebrations Jeez. and the wow. money that people spend yeah um so it did have a lot of really interesting talking points and I actually think it would make a good book club book um, and definitely a good summer book because it does have a lot of that you know I've kind of always wanted to visit Newport and see like the the Vanderbilt mansion and you know see if it's oh, yeah. really as, as elaborate as they say and so forth but um, there were some unlikely plot lines you know but you kind of go around along for the ride it, it's entertaining, but um, so yeah, I'd say all in all, I gave it maybe three and a half, four stars. It was a good book for summer, but um, just like I said, for me personally, that you know, the, the suicide issue, I, I always take, you know, I always have a problem. It's with a that. very serious topic. Oh, Sounds yeah. like you appreciate when it's written with when it's written with sensitivity and like nuance right yeah not just cavalier and a bit more realistic yeah. like if you really know somebody that struggles there are ups and downs yeah, it's like sure. an ocean wave but it doesn't just magically disappear because one good thing happened in your life right yeah. Right. yeah so so what's your first one um my first one is um of course we said by lynn painter happily never after and I picked it up because of the cover, but also the name, the title, Happily Never After. So we know that it's not going to be just happy, happy, joy, joy, everything's going perfectly right. fine. So um, we meet Sophie Steinbeck, who is about to get married to Stuart, and she's going to get her happily ever after. And she is so excited about that. But before the wedding, she finds out that Stuart has cheated on her oh, yet, no. yet again. Well, yet again. <laughs> because because this has happened before, and she forgave him, and now she just, no, this is not going to happen. I guess she never heard the once a cheater, always a cheater rule. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> so she wants to call off the wedding, but there are problems with that. Um, you know, there's the expense that her father has incurred, and um, not to mention the fact that her future father-in-law is her father's boss. Oh, dear. And oh, th dear. things are not going to go well if she's the one to call off the wedding. Okay. But she does want the wedding called off. So what is she going to do? Well, a friend suggests a professional objector. 
And it is, and I, I really liked the promise of this because it is his job to go to weddings <laughs> and when the part of the wedding comes up that says, is there anyone here who objects to this couple getting married? He stands up and he objects. And then he airs whatever dirty laundry there is. Oh, this sounds like a great part-time and gig, he, doesn't yes, it? Yes, this is his How side hustle. How does one get involved with this? This is his side hustle. And <laughs> he he sort of wrecks the wedding for the bride or groom that wants out. Mm-hmm. And then it's 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 not their fault. It's it's not, you know, it's this is what happened and it's ruined and they didn't do it. Yeah. So um, Max Parks is the objector, okay. and he goes to Sophie's room after the whole thing is ruined uh, to get paid. And, of course, she's there, and she's a bit of a hot mess, and she's getting drunk. And he decides to stay and, you know, get drunk with her. And they start talking about this side hustle, and she thinks it's a great idea. He's a hero. She wants to be the heroine to his hero. Okay. And she thinks, wouldn't it be even better if the two of us went to weddings together? Because it, it wouldn't be conspicuous. We're, we're a couple. We're going to a wedding. And then he could object sometimes and she could object sometimes. And they would be saving couples from heartbreak and, and from messing up their lives. So um, this is just a great idea. And they also find out that they have great physical chemistry and uh, they hook up along the way. But it's okay because they're, they, there is no such thing as true love and they're not going to get involved and they're not going to have feelings for each other. So oh. it's, it's going to be okay. What could possibly go wrong? How the mighty are fallen. That's right. <laughs> and uh, so they're having their time. She's having the time of her life. I mean, this is already his job. But she just thinks it's great. So they're going along fine until... Um, what happens is the groom who reaches out to Sophie to hire her uh, come to find out the fiance, who's the bride, who's going to be getting married, is the woman who broke Max's heart. Oh. So she is the one that is the reason Max started doing this job, because his heart was broken. And he has reservations about doing the wedding because he doesn't want to see her hurt. And Sophie doesn't exactly like the fact that he may still have feelings for her and realizes that she's falling for him Okay. in the process. We so knew that had to happen. We, we did know that. It's getting but messy. Yeah, so um, no spoilers, but that gets complicated. Okay. Well, this sounds fun. It, it is. I liked the premise of it. It's not just the regular straight rom-com story right, well, that I usually read. And, and I liked it. I, I would say the only thing, um, if I had to say something about, you know, uh, it's not a negative. It's just that there was a lot of bedroom business um, okay, detailed so, so people would call um, with this the hookups. like an open door. And, and you and it, you I know, have talked I'm, about this. Yes, and yeah. I'm, I'm fine with just, you know, they went into the bedroom or the closet or the elevator or wherever they went. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> I don't need to know every detail. To be in there. Yeah. Okay? You prefer a fade out rather than I, a... I do. Yeah. Yeah. I do. And I, and I also kind of like um, the journey and the story to get to the end where they end right. up together. Right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, some people really like the, you know, the that's hot fine. chili peppers. But that, yeah. That's fine. I, I cannot do them on audio. I, I, it's like, oh my gosh, you know. <laughs> I feel like a voyeur. You look, I can't you do it. look over in the car next to you, and yeah, they're like, like looking at you. Yeah, like, like please, <laughs> please don't know what I'm it's, listening to. It's fi- it's perfectly fine. And sometimes if you pick up a romance novel and it it has the yeah. the the cowboy on the front, it, you you expect it, right? But sometimes in the rom com, I'm not expecting it. Yeah, because they have those cute little cartoon covers, which sometimes yes, you know, yeah. And if there's, you know, I I like the meet cute, and I like the the, the story, the, right. the journey of them 
um, maybe not liking each other, then liking each other, yeah. then the you chase. know, yeah, yeah. I, I I like that part. So um, so does this like border on what do they call them? Uh, Chili peppers, <laughs> bodice no. peppers. Oh no, 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 no. It just, no, no. It just ha- it just was a little unexpected, and yeah. and the but the thing is, was it necessary? Yeah. Uh-huh. I, to me, it wasn't necessary to okay. the story. Yeah. But it's not a negative. It's right. just um, that it was a little more than some of the other ones that, okay. that she has. I think you're going to really like my next one. It's called Summer Fridays by Suzanne Rendell. And this one has kind of been described as you've got mail mixed with a love letter to New York City. Oh. But it has that level of romance that I think you'll like because I'm kind of the same way you are. Like Love you know, You've Got Mail. Yes. Um, yeah, that's such a great movie. But um, So anyway, this one is set in the summer of 1999 and our main character is Sawyer. She's kind of a 20-something, just got out of school and she is engaged to her college boyfriend and his name is, is it Charles? Yes, and he's going to be an attorney for a very like prominent, prestigious law firm. And if you don't know anything about them, they tend to eat people up, you know, like yes. all the hours and everything and trying to get ahead. So he's been working a lot, and he invites her to this work function that he has, and lo and behold, his partner in this, you know, top secret exclusive case that he's working on is this lovely young blonde named Kendra. So Kendra's boyfriend, Nick, is sitting there and Sawyer and Charles and they, Sawyer and Kendra, um, I mean, Sawyer and Nick are pretty much ignored at this whole company dinner because Charles is talking exclusively to Kendra and then they go out and have a smoke break together and Nick makes a comment to Sawyer, kind of like that he thinks they're going to have an affair, like the two of their partners. And she takes, you know, of course, exception to this right. because she's engaged. Yes. She thinks everything is fine and Nick is just working hard to make a good future for them and so forth. Well, come to find out, um, she's spending a lot of time alone. Nick starts um, instant messaging her. And first he apologizes for making the comment at the dinner, you know, making her uncomfortable. And he has lived in New York his whole life. And she has these half days in the publishing business where she has summer Fridays. So a lot of rich people go to the Hamptons. And if you're not rich, you're kind of there in the city. So she's from Oregon or somewhere on the West Coast. So anyway, Nick starts meeting her and she gets a list of what, things that she's wanted to see and they start exploring the city on Fridays Nick is also a musician so sometimes she goes to his gigs and listens to different bands this is like the late 90s you probably know this Sean was kind of a great time for music kind of was you know especially there in the city so she is really starting to enjoy the time that she spends with him and realize they have a lot of things in common um so it's it's just so much fun and it really the instant messaging back and forth was just kind of cute to yeah sure to to read and of course their relationship does develop of course you do find out that you know maybe charles and kendra are kind of having an affair but she also gets tied in to charles's family you know they really think of her as a daughter so she's she's totally torn like she's wearing this engagement ring like what what does she want to do with her life and um so fast forward nick has asked her to make a decision about what she wants to do and on the day of that something really happens oh boy and then you flash forward to after 9 11 like a few years after 9 11 and she's kind of reminiscing on a bench. You know that she's by herself, but I don't want to go into oh, and spoil like what happens. Now I have to read it. You have to read it. it um, <laughs> like now, you have to read it. It just, um, you know, remembering that event and how people were affected. And this author does a really good job like of her walking through the city and people having the 
you know, last, have you seen so-and-so last seen at, oh. you know, walking to work on such and such a day? And, you know, it all kind of comes back to you, how you f- oh, yeah. felt about that event. Where I you think were. It's, and yes. What, it's one of those events that I think, like, if you were old enough to remember when John Kennedy was shot yes. or what happened, yes. it's, it's just one of those iconic signature events in your lifetime that you're going to remember. But... um so what happens when the summer is over? What happens in the future? Um, I really like this book. I thought it was a really sweet romance. Um, I thought that Sawyer was a little naive for that time period, just because, you know, I kind of grew up during that yeah. <laughs> time period. Yeah. But, um, but besides that, I, I liked the story. I liked the characters a lot. And it was very interesting reading about his music scene and her, her wanting to be a writer and seeing how they fit together. You know, it, it keeps throwing me because you keep saying, in, you know, instant messaging messaging and i'm like what what is she talking about and it's like oh yeah 99 right 99 right like she used to log on it was the dial-up yeah. computer and if you were messaging someone yes. you couldn't yep. get phone calls yep. you yes. had to put an away message up yeah and it was wow yeah yeah so that is so this is like huge. pretexting days yeah mm-hmm. what like you've got mail like you were right. saying you've yes. got mail yeah. yeah so yeah wow i'm i'm going to read that one all right, what's your next one? My next one is called um, Love Wager, also Lynn Painter. And um, so we have Hallie Piper. And when we first meet Hallie, she is uh, bartending at a wedding. And this gentleman comes up to order a drink. And um, she knows she knows him. And he knows he knows her, but they don't really know from where. But Hallie has uh, several part-time jobs. Okay. And she realizes that her one of her other jobs is working at a jewelry store, and she sold him an engagement ring Uh-oh. for his girlfriend, Vanessa, who then walks up to the bar thinking that there's something going on between Hallie and Jack. Jack Marshall is his name. And Vanessa doesn't handle this very well at all. And she accuses them, you know, of of something going on, uh, ends up throwing a drink in Hallie's face. Oh, dear. You know, this is definitely not the meat cute. No, I think Vanessa (laughs) has uh, serious anger issues. So so Jack realizes... Run, Jack, run. Jack realizes that Vanessa is not the best idea he's ever had, and he ends up not proposing to Vanessa. So um, at the end of this wedding, Hallie is there, you know, kind of embarrassed about what happened. Jack's there uh, thinking, you know, I almost made the biggest mistake of my life. And so they end up, of course, getting drunk together. There's a lot of drinking in these stories that probably there shouldn't be. (laughs) And they end up in a hotel room together. And the next morning, Hallie wakes up and is mortified. She can't believe that, you know, this, this is, this is her rock bottom. Did, did, Did this really happen? Is this really how she's living her life? So as she um, crawls out of the room so that he doesn't wake up and she doesn't have to face what has happened so she can do her little walk of shame, you know, on her own, um, she really has an epiphany and says, you know, I need to change my life. I, I'm living in an apartment with my hippie roommate. I, I need a place of my own. Mm-hmm. I need a new haircut. I need a new um, wardrobe. I need a, a career, not these part-time jobs. I just need one, you know, full-time career job. And I need, and I need to um, really be an adult. I'm going to adult now. Okay. And so she does all these things. And also, she needs a new love. She needs an adult love. So she goes on a dating app. I don't know. Oh, I don't dear. know what what the connection is between being an adult and going on a dating app is, but um, she thinks that's a great idea. And who does she find on the dating app? The guy from the wedding. The guy from the wedding, Jack Marshall, and he in turn finds her, and they realize that it's you know the other, and they start communicating, not to date, but to talk about dating, about okay. each finding love. 
And so they um, conjure up this idea to set up dates and go to the same restaurant. And if the dates don't work out, they can, can, they can um, have signals <laughs> that the dates aren't working out, and then they can come up with excuses, and they can leave, and they can go down the street and get tacos together and talk about their bad dates. This, is, this sounds wonderful. It, it's pretty great, right? It helps yeah. to have an out. Yeah. It really does. So um, I love a plan B. Yes, <laughs> of course. And so uh, they think that it'll make it even better if they make a wager. Uh-oh. On who is going to find love first. Yeah. Like, like bets and wagers ever make things better. Yeah. But um, so they do. And if, if she wins, um, she's going to get the trip to Paris that he was going to be his honeymoon. Oh, wow. And if he wins, he's going to get the autographed baseball that she took from her ex when they broke up. And, and so they have something, an incentive okay. to find love uh, first. So they go along, everything's fine with these dates, and, and they're almost happy that the dates aren't working out mm-hmm. and that they're ending up getting a lot of tacos together. But what goes wrong uh, or right is that she ends up finding Alex, and the date goes really well. Oh, no. And almost too well in Jack's opinion. And then they have subsequent dates that go really well. Well, this is not this is not working for Jack because he's developed feelings for her, and even though he won't admit it, so he does something to sabotage that relationship. Uh oh. And she is crushed, and her sister's wedding is coming up, and Alex was supposed to go with her. So what is she going to do? And Jack says, "I'll go with you." You know, like I will save you. Um, and we will fake being a couple. So your family won't know that I'm not your boyfriend and everything will be great, And which it is great. They have the best time and the fake dating works really well. Um, but they come back and at the airport, I'm not going to say who is waiting at the airport, but someone is waiting at the airport when they get back. Okay. And... So we have to read it and decide who she's going to be with. <laughs> well, that sounds fun. This yeah. It sounds like, you know, I don't think I've read a Lynn Painter, but she's got some kind of different premises. Yes. Or either that or I haven't read a lot of rom-coms. Maybe I just read the same people. But yeah, I, those both of those sound really fun. They're fun stories. And the texting back and forth between the two of them. Yeah. Um, like you said, you liked the instant messaging right. between the two. I really looked forward to the texts yeah. between them. Like the banter were, back and yes, forth. Yes, the banter and the yeah. teasing and they the little nicknames they have for each other and, yeah. and just how they develop this friendship oh, that together fun. that ends up being more. But oh, yeah. All right, now I'm going to have to add her to <laughs> yes, my list yes, too. Yes, too many books do. to read. So anyway, my last one is a book called Sandwich by Catherine Newman. And this one is funny. It's kind of blown up this summer. I just had to buy more copies for the library because so many people are putting this book on hold. And come to find out, I had an advanced copy. So I thought, huh, I'm going to see what this is all about. So anyway... um, I should have been like the target audience for this because this one, the main protagonist, her name is Rocky, which is short for something, but um, that's her nickname. But she's like older, middle age. Parents are aging. uh, Children are young adults, kind of stuck in the middle, going through menopause. You know, I was like, should have related to this book, but... Rocky's a little over the top. So anyway, here's the setup. Rocky has looked forward to her family's, it's like an annual escape to Cape Cod. I think it's Sandwich, Massachusetts. Love Cape Cod. Um, Yeah, I've only been once, but I liked it too. I'd love to go back. It's It's a little humble house that they go to. So not only is she trying to stuff a lot of people in this house, she's got her her adult daughter, she's got her son, and I believe it's either girlfriend or fiance, but very serious, you know, partner, um, her husband, and then her aging parents are also coming down for oh, a visit. Wow. There's a septic system, you know, <laughs> not a lot of storage. Not, uh, it sounds like 
I, I can just picture her her nerves at everything that could go wrong. So she's sandwiched between her kids, for, between her, her parents, all this stuff. And her hormones are just going crazy and that was the one thing it's like this woman can go on a rager like nobody's business and i was just like wow i don't Mm -hmm. even believe her husband's putting up with her and her husband on the other hand comes across like this saint it's like who can believe a man like this really you know exist but um so anyway a lot of a lot of secrets come out in this week um not just about her children like one of her children her daughter is openly gay you know but they have a very open relationship about it you know and can talk about it and that was the other thing it was like how many children are this open like she and her mother have these nude swimming things at night and i'm like this is a little weird to me maybe it's just because i'm too buttoned up but i just i don't know if that's weird. yeah no i yeah. couldn't i couldn't do it so Parts of this book I thought were really good and really spot on. And a lot of it I thought was, for me, was very over the top. Like, yeah, menopause can be a real pain in the butt. But man, this woman, man, she was on steroids. So Okay. Um, this was and, next level. And then there's some storylines in here about pregnancy loss, you know, miscarriage. Mm that were also tough. So that was the one thing that I would say is if that's kind of triggering for you, I might avoid this book because that was really something that she went into deeply and the way she felt about things that she had hidden from her own family, you know, came out. So that would be, um, that would be a kind of a, an alert for me. That would be tough for me. Yeah. Yeah. But for some reason, people are a lot of people are really liking this book. Like Ann Patchett blurbed it on the front, and that's what made me read it because yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, if Ann Patchett, you know, right, said right. to read it, I'm going to bow down read it, in yeah. homage. Yeah. yeah. So, but you never know. Some books are for you, and others are not, and that's kind of what makes the world go round. So for me, it was kind of a eh, a miss, but right. still on the hold list, still okay. going strong. So must resonate with a lot of other people besides me. So what is your last, what do you got for us? Um, I have a uh, YA by Lynn Painter, um, Betting on You. Okay. And um, this is Bailey and Charlie. And the age-old question, um, is it possible for a guy and a girl to be friends? Just friends. Um, Sort of when Harry met Sally Mm -hmm. question. Uh, which I love that movie too, by the way. Yes. And um, so they meet on a 10-hour flight. And, you know, she's very buttoned up. She's very prim and proper, glasses, bun, hair in the bun, and, and rule follower. And he is the complete opposite of her. And they don't get along at all. And they argue about everything. And she, her parents are getting divorced. And he has already lived through through that okay. situation, and so um, you know he's pretty cynical, and he's sort of giving her um, you know advice, and which she kind of doesn't want, and you know he's such a free spirit, and he's kind of wild, and he's just not you know for her, but he intrigues her though, and she intrigues him, so they cross paths. Um, a year or two later, and nothing has changed with them not getting along. Then uh, fast forward to her getting a new job, and who is her coworker? The Charlie. same guy. Yes, mm-hmm. Bailey and Charlie again. Um, so, but but something has changed because now they have met up enough times where, um, like I said, they're intrigued by each other. Mm-hmm. And there's another. Um, and and they have that divorce in common, right? The, the, the sort Maybe of like going through family trauma. trauma. Yes, yes, they have that in common, and so um, they also have a couple friends that work with them that are spoken for. They they have significant others, mm-hmm. but they are very flirty with each other, and so Bailey and Charlie are. Going back to that question of can they just be friends or is something going to happen between them? And they place a bet on it, um, whether or not these two are going to get together. Okay. 
And in the process, they become closer and they start sort of flirting a bit. And um, you see that they have feelings for each other, but they're not going to, they're not going to, they're not going to admit it, of course. And then um, Charlie helps Bailey more with, with the trauma and with the situations, the family situations, and they become closer. And also they um, start fake dating because they want to uh, bother Bailey's mom and her new boyfriend. Oh, the fake dating always gets the them. fake dating <laughs> uh, because um, Bailey's mom's new boyfriend does not like Charlie and does not think that he's a good influence. So of course, let's bring him around more. Of course, to cause a rift between mom, mom and, and boyfriend. dad. Yeah. Yes, because she doesn't want this. She doesn't want to move. She doesn't want this new stepdad. She doesn't want okay. this situation. So um, yes, it's a it's a YA, but um, Charlie also has made another bet that. Bailey doesn't know about, and it has to do with her. Uh Uh-oh. So that's going to be the complicated part of that. And, yes, these are young characters. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the story is is cute, and, um, like I said, it's lighter than the adult fiction. And I picked it up because it was also Lynn Painter. And she has a couple other YAs that I was interested in, so I thought there there was three of them, so I thought I'll just read them all because they're yeah. fast reads. It's just like the movies, one of hers. Yes. I also read um, it's better than the movies. Okay. So there's a new one coming out, though, there right? There is in a the new fall? one, nothing like the movies. Oh, okay. So better than the movies um, has uh, Liz and Wes um, that, they are neighbors, okay. grew up together, and basically um, the premise is that Liz needs Wes's help to get Michael to notice her because Wes and Michael are friends. Okay, She wants to go to the prom with Michael, and so that's her in. Wes is going to fix it so that she ends up with Michael, and um, nothing like the movies is coming out in October, and I believe it's the same characters, and those two books are connected. Okay. Whereas these other ones are not part of a series. Yeah. And then there's also the do-over, which is just um, a girl who has Valentine's Day over and over, like okay. Groundhog Day. Yes. Mm. <laughs> and it's a terrible Valentine's Day where she catches her boyfriend cheating, and she tries to correct it each time. But as she tries to correct it each time, you know if you if you change one thing, oh, it right. has a domino effect. That's right, the butterfly effect, right? And um, the funny, that one is funny, okay. because the funny part of that one is that the she thinks it's going to just repeat forever, so she decides to just go crazy, okay. because nothing counts, right? Right. So you can get a tattoo, you can tell someone off, you can crash the car, you can do whatever, because the next day you're going to wake up, and it didn't happen. Yeah. Well, that's when it may stop. <laughs> so... <laughs> That would be bad, right? Yeah. So these um, these YAs, um, just cute, fast reads, fun. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. I might have to read a couple of hers. I'm going to add her to my list, but yeah, you should. Yeah. yeah. Who's it? Who is it? Lynn Painter. Lynn Painter. Okay. Yeah. Some great suggestions. So, and how did how did you like find her in the first place? It was the happily never after that was on a cart that I walked by, which is how I often find books. Right. And something about the cover and the title. Just speaks to you. Speaks to me, and I pick it up, and I start reading it. And worst case, it's not for me. Right. And I put it back, and I pick up another one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if I like it, I finish it, and then I go on to read other books by that author. And now you found an author that you really like that's like an auto-read or auto-buy for you. Yes, and sometimes what happens is, because I believe Happily Never After was possibly the newer one, and sometimes that happens, I I will read the newer one, and then I will go backwards to the other ones. But if they're not a series, that's fine. Right, different characters. Well, awesome. It sounds like a lot of those are perfect summer reads. So here we are in August, and uh, I'm sure that between the two of us, 
we have something for someone to enjoy between I August and so. Labor Day. Um, so thank you for joining us today. We're going to say enjoy the rest of your summer, and we will be back in September with two book breaks. We're going to have some exciting guests. We're going to have a preview of books that we're looking forward to coming out in the fall. So if you're inclined, leave us a review or email us suggestions for topics that you'd like to hear us talk about. And Sherry, thanks for being such a great guest and joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Book Break is a production of the Greece Public Library made possible through the support of the Friends of the Greece Public Library. Theme music composed and performed by Sean Greif.